Hello everybody, I'm Ken Braverman. This is 2019 Weekly Payroll in Excel. This is a Microsoft Excel file and a video about this file, which is really a program. It's a software program basically fully built inside Microsoft Excel that can do payroll for your small business. Um, small business, anything under 100 employees, uh, even under like 500 employees, you'd have no trouble getting it into this file and having everything easy to view, um, quick ways to look at all your reports, um, querying anybody's paycheck or past things, changing things if you got them wrong. Um, it, it's really easy to manipulate and it can totally be run the way you want to run it so that you understand it and we can adjust things about how you enter stuff about all your employees and all the different sheets um, any way you want it. And it's a base template and you kind of build off from it. It's a, an inexpensive solution um, so you can really minimize any manual work that you have to do constantly. If you find yourself with paper running back and forth or keeping track of subtotals of quarterly 941 payments or things like that, and you just want to have it all in one place and have it easy to access, I can show you how it works. And also, this is going to be kind of a long video, but we're going to go over the different elements that you need to deal with if you are running a business. For example, you need to pay something called 941 tax, which is federal tax, for your for your employees. You need to um, also uh, pay, uh, depending on what state you're in, you might have to pay a state tax. Uh, in the file that we're going to go over in this video, there's Arizona and Texas. Texas doesn't have any state tax, but Arizona does. Uh, so we'll, we'll go over a little bit of that. There's SUI and UI, uh, FUDA. SUDA and FUDA, as they call it, it's state unemployment and federal unemployment. Um, there's going to be a rate assigned by your state. You're going to have to deal with that. There can be workers' compensation over here. If you have a company where you have workers' compensation for any reason and have to pay based on the amount of wages or however that's figured. Um, uh, there's federal tax. There's Social Security. There's Medicare. There's a lot of different elements to it. And um, over years and years of doing this um, and seeing how the structure works across the United States in many different states, I can tell you that um, it's always it's just taxes. We all have to pay our taxes. We come to a number and um, backing up how you get there and, and showing how the formulas are calculated makes it actually really easy when you do it over and over again. So, a couple minutes in, let's talk about how we would do this. So, um, let's pretend like we're in Texas or Arizona. Uh, let's pretend that we're in San Antonio or Prescott and let's be two people let's have one of them not be married and the other one will be married because it affects your tax state exemptions the second person who's married we're gonna have that person have two exemptions because they're gonna be in Arizona and in Arizona you get to pick your own rate uh, somehow you fill out a form and it's like hey it's the A4 uh, you have filled before, you're like, how much you want to withhold from my paycheck? 0.8%, 1.3%, 1.8%, well, all right, I'll go in the middle, why not? Let's go 2.7, sounds like fun. Uh, it's going to obviously, you're going to have a rate that you're going to have to pay at the end of the year under taxes, and you want this to be accurate so that you don't under-withhold, over-withhold, whatever, um, but apparently you do get to choose that. That's for Arizona. Uh, Texas is uh, the other employee here. Who's going to be in Texas? I don't know. George H.W., okay, recently deceased, but he was a hard worker, so let's honor him in this video. You can also do things like add addresses and, and hire dates and things like that, but we won't get into the specifics. We're going to talk about just the basic things you have to pay. Who's in, in Arizona? Well, we're honoring the fall. It's not Veterans Day. It's Martin Luther King Day, but whatever. I hope they celebrate Martin Luther King Day in Arizona, by the way. I know they used to, to not do that. All right. <clears throat> so we'll go with John McCain in Arizona. So we have two employees now. What did they do and when did they do it? Well, let's put in some hours for the first few weeks here for Mr. George H.W. Bush. Notice this is a drop-down menu where you're just going to be able to choose the name that you've already entered in to this employee info master sheet over here. Now, <clears throat> we're going to start using some dates and there are ways to change the dates in, uh, in this file. I won't get too into the specifics of how to do that. We can talk about that if you want to order one um, because there's ways to set parameters exactly for your business so that 
uh, you're able to make sure that you have the proper pay week and pay date and stuff. This this company pays on a Friday after a Thursday to Wednesday pay period week. So the pay period starts on a Thursday and on a Wednesday, and then the check comes out on a Friday. Let's give everybody some hours. Hold on. Let's give Mr. Bush some extra hours. Double time for John McCain. <clears throat> Maybe some vacation. Right? Putting in some hours. There's also an area here for subcontractor over here on the right. What that is is if you have a subcontractor and somebody else who's not an employee of your company but you pay them, you could say, well, um, Bob Dole never made it to the presidency. And you can give ID numbers and stuff. And then what you can do is you can go back to your hours and you can say, I have hours for a subcontractor, Bob Dole over here on this date. You know, and maybe he did 10 hours and then you can have a rate and stuff over here and you can start to do some calculations about invoicing and payments and things like that. So there's also an area for subcontractor if you want it. But you don't need to enter an employee if you enter a subcontractor because it's going to be a different thing. So just your employees would go over here. Now, in your weekly all data sheet, what we have here is just to show you a little breadth of, uh, really, there's enough space within Microsoft Excel to program every possible reasonable scenario for every state. I haven't actually done that in one file because it would take a long time. and. It, it's a fun idea to do, but it changes every year and it would take months and months to do. So what I've done though is I do it one at a time as we go because there's some basic things that you need to have. <clears throat> there's certain types of taxes that everyone pays in every state and then there's ways that money is treated and you can account for that by doing what this is, which is a bunch of different formulas um, in every possible scenario that you could need for your business. All right now what's cool is that the way it's built is flexible in a manner that it's very easy to update this and change this for your own business's specific whatever for example we have a sample here where we have aflac is is a column here this business has an aflac deduction there's also a ton of different other deductions that i have hiding in here that you can use as well, like Aetna, Delta Dental, and Vision stuff, all stuff that people have given to me in the past when their business has needed it, and I've just left it in here as a formula. So with Aflac, let's say that George Bush was paying for Aflac for some reason. His Kenny Bunkport uh, health plan wasn't covering him anymore. VA wasn't working, so he's, he's paying for Aflac. Let's say he also has an additional um, federal tax withheld of 25 bucks. <clears throat> let's say that George Bush makes 50 bucks an hour. Let's say he got a $250 bonus for being cool. Let's say he got some garnishments from a previous marriage child support that we didn't know about. Um, there's some reimbursements here of another something else for travel. There's all kinds of different things you could have in here. And, and you can start to put in hourly rates all the way down. You can say that George Bush's hourly rate is always $50. So you can prepare and go all the way down throughout the year and have him have $50. You can also look at this. This is really where you're entering in all your weekly summary payroll data. You can say, I only care about <clears throat> the first like two pay periods because then you can just see the employees you want easily and type them in and say, oh, you know, McCain also has $25 AFLAC and his rate is $25 an hour and he had a $1,000 bonus here, right? You can start putting in different information for different people. Once you've done that, you now have basically everything you need to generate your pay stubs and to generate any report you, you would and see what tax you would owe and, and where you would owe it and if you should pay it yet or not. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to look at a pay stub, which is pretty easy to use. You choose the week. We're doing the first week, which is the January 2nd of, uh, of the year, and we'll choose the employee right here. And the paycheck just pops up in front of us and hopefully it's right <laughs> it probably is um, <clears throat> we can see that it looks like 1500 and then reimbursements of a hundred yep yep looking looking right so it'll total up everything and you can always just change employees here and look at different pay stubs 
Um, you can see that uh, John McCain, there's a problem with update state in Arizona. So this means that we need to update something in the, the file. Um, probably this needs to be Arizona. It actually tells you when there are errors and things like that as you're entering in data. Or we might need to change formulas in here to connect Arizona state tax because I think I didn't do that because I actually sent this to a client who's only in Texas. But um, either way, the point is is that um, you can see how it updates everything for you in what the pay stub and also gives you a dollar amount when we have a pay stub that's working correctly. Um, you can see that there's actually a pay stub that pops up right here. And you can actually print that out on checks on a printer and have a pay stub. Uh, by just formatting and changing around these uh, widths of the columns and get it to fit perfectly on your printer. Now what we have on top of that is you have some of your tax that you have to pay, 941 tax. This is a report for doing your 941. Um, it, it's a PDF you can print out and just fill it out. This is all the different titles of all the different um, lines that you have to fill out on it. All you have to do is pick a quarter if you wanted to file a quarterly report like a lot of employers have to do, um, it'll show you what month you had to deposit this money. If you were a monthly depositor or a semi-weekly depositor, we could do this other thing which is called the Schedule Part B for the 941 to show each day that you were supposed to deposit after your paychecks. You can look, instead of just by looking by quarter, you can look by a specific paycheck if you're you know, doing it one at a time. It'll show you what you would owe down here. Um, it's also pretty user friendly so that when you pick the quarter and you try like, oh, I also want to pick a pay period, it shows up in red and shows you that it's not working right. It's only looking at the whole quarter because uh, it's usually a quarterly report, the 941. There's also detail and pivot tables here. All you can do is just right click inside there and refresh, right click and refresh, just a little note there, and you get information that you would have by employee that could be used for filling out the W-2s which are coming due here at the end of January soon. Uh, you're going to get subtitles for all the columns in different boxes. I also have a, a W-2 supplement sheet to this uh, that helps you file your W-2s with it at the end of the year and send them to your employee. There's a great way to do it online through Business Services Online, the Social Security Administration's website for online filing of W-2s. It's a fantastic service, and this provides all the numbers for you to go in and hand type them. We don't, I don't provide an upload for that service yet, but um, usually if you're working with, you know, not too many employees, it's really not that cumbersome to go in. And also your subtitles are always going to match, so you're going to know that you have everything in there correctly when you're done. <clears throat> uh, let's go with some unemployment and workers' comp reports. So all you do is you right-click inside, you refresh these reports. They already refreshed because we refreshed one on another sheet, so this one refreshed too. It's going to show you... Um, if we had any unemployment rates, which go here on the employee and for master sheet down here, if we put some unemployment rates in here for these states, which taxes a certain amount of your wages, uh, of each employee's wages at the beginning when they start working. So the first 7,000 of your wages get taxed in Arizona, the first 9,000 get taxed in Texas. This is an employer tax that you have to pay. Um, as the employer, the employee does not, doesn't come out of their wages, something you have to pay. We refresh this, okay? We're going to refresh this right after we just change that, and all of a sudden you can see that we have a certain amount of tax that's due. And there's something called excess wages, which they usually ask for on those reports, which are uh, if you're going to uh, say, well, I paid this person $10,000 this, this quarter, and only the first $7,000 are taxable, so there's $3,000 of excess wages. That's going to populate in here if, uh, you know, for example, we add a you know an eight thousand dollar bonus or ten thousand dollar bonus or whatever here and go and refresh you'll see that you'll have some excess wages that have just popped up for John McCain so you don't have to do any of that math yourself it's going to give you everything for your reports same thing for the FUDO report that's usually like six tenths of a percent probably for most people uh, depending on what state you're in what your rate is um, but that's going to calculate there. Then you have workers' comp over here if you've got any of that. State tax reports, I think we need to fix Arizona probably. Yeah, it's not Arizona's not calculating properly because they got to fix that. So we won't edit that out of video. You just understand that that's how I check, see whether, and you know what? I'll show you how I do this. Now, now that you've basically seen what the reports are and how this stuff works and how easy it is and how quickly, once you just enter in your daily information here, anywhere, 
and you go to your weekly and look at what you're doing, that once you do all that, uh, you're basically in great shape and, and just save the file and email it to yourself as a copy or whatever, whatever, and you're good. Now, I broke Arizona. I'm going to fix Arizona. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm opening up all these different columns with, that have all these different formulas and stuff. I'm going to show you how, how quick it is to fix this and, and fix it in perpetuity for everything. So what's going on is there's a state tax formula, right? I just passed it. It's right here. State tax formula is only looking for Texas. And we also want it to look for Arizona. If I for if I for equals quotation marks AZ, which is stands for Arizona, we want to kick back the tax that was Arizona's tax, which is right here. And then if we still have an error, we still have an error. I heard too many arguments, did I? Oh, yes, because we have an extra comma. I'm very blind if you didn't know. I had that on the end. Okay, so we just updated that. I think I fixed it for Arizona. We also paste that formula all the way down, so it applies to all records. And then we go back, and we're going to look at our state tax report. We're going to refresh, and we're going to see that John McCain owes, owed his estate owes $337.50 in this fantasy world of payroll that we've done based on that rate that we chose over here. Okay, so um, we're 16 minutes in. I know it's a long video, but um, also when you think about the time that you spend manually doing payroll every month and also uh, the, the, the comfort knowing whether or not you actually have all your information and numbers correct. How do you compare this to a bank statement? Do we want to add different reports on things? You can start to do reports and track things like uh, people and how they work. I mean, look at how quick and fast this is. You can say, <clears throat> people always ask me for these type of reports. You have an employee name. You have regular hours. And how about week ending? So you can just start to do things like this and add in uh, different things like uh, charts. And do, 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 do we want to insert pivot chart? Pivot chart will start to give you uh, mappings of stuff you care about when it comes to these people. So you can see that. Uh, you, you can change these around. It's really endless what you can do. It's kind of interesting. So I'm just trying to figure out, okay, who, who was working more hours just what, you know, without even looking at the numbers, what happened? And I think it's, I can't tell which one's which here. But you can see how all really you have to do is just play around. I think I might want to do it this way. Playing around with the pivots, there we go. So George Bush dropped in hours, John McCain went up in hours, is red here, right? You can start doing things like um, changing the formats, which allow you to add different um, labels to things. I don't like this type of chart. I know we're getting lost in the weeds here, but that's okay. And the reason is, is that I want to show you just how easy this is a little better. How easy this is to really look at there's different types of hours. There's overtime hours also. See, so look at what's going on here. So now we have things like you can add data labels to this. There's all kinds of stuff. It just it's really endless. Um so we also, another thing I'd like to show you about is slicers, which I haven't really shown you much about. Slicers are going to allow you to toggle and filter your data based on whatever you want to filter it by. So you can say, I only care about George Bush's hours. You can click George Bush, you can see the graph is going to change, the um, number of hours. You can see they dropped. I don't know what's the red, overtime hours probably? Yep. 
you can just look at one week at a time. You can unfilter. What I did here was I unfiltered this. Like you can hit one, you unfilter it with this funnel at the top. You can say, all right, I want to look at just this one date. Here you've got, looks like George Bush and McCain, regular hours only. There's all, it's, the, so you can see uh, just the power of consolidating your data and understanding that taking just the employee information that you need to submit and the rates and the formulas that exist already uh, that are all buried within here. Um, like, you know, for example, this is what uh, the, the federal withholding rate for a weekly payer, what it is this year, if you're single or if you're married, it's this. And I can start posting these in the, uh, the formulas for these in the comments that you can do it yourself. But what it is, is it just looks and it looks at the amount of taxable wages that you have and uh, says, you know, what what amount is that and, and within what range is that, within what layer is that, and then you look at that layer and you tax it by a certain amount of money and then add a certain amount of accumulated tax for all the sub brackets under it because you know whatever bracket you're in, if you're in the highest bracket you're really in all the brackets. Uh, you're in all the brackets leading up to the highest bracket because that's the way the progressive income, income structure works. And we think about changes that have happened over the last few years you have things like the, the highest bracket went from 39.6 down to 37, which is a lot of money. Um, a lot of money at that, at that level, but um, the rate for the rest of us also changed differently too. Like things went from 10% or 12 or 22 or 24, they changed things around, um, but it's staggered along all the way. So uh, that's just a little lesson on rates and, and how these formulas work and what they look like. But anyway, if you stick around for this whole video, you probably want a payroll file um, because you can see how much time we can save you. So go to KimBurberman.com or just follow the links below. I have a weekly, a bi-weekly, semi-monthly version, a monthly version, a quarterly version too actually. And um, I have yet to find a situation where you can't program it in here and have it work the way you want it to. I haven't done every state. Um, that's a goal. The goal is to go to every state and do the payroll file in that state. So I actually drove to Arizona when someone asked me for an Arizona file because it's not that far from here. Um, so anyway, uh, payroll should be easy. I can help you out if you need it. So go to KevRidman.com and um, may, uh, yeah, may, may your payroll not be a headache because it's not